Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Butch. I'd like to welcome you to the to Zwingli United Church of Christ on this third Sunday of Advent, a Sunday we call Gaudete Sunday. Uh, and Gaudete means rejoice, and you'll hear more about rejoicing a little bit later uh, in Scripture and also in the sermon. And it's also the day for our congregational meeting, so I hope that uh, many of you who are here will be able to stay for that congregational meeting. And also those who are on Facebook Live, uh, we will have it. There's a Zoom link that has been sent to you so that you can be a part of that meeting as well. So hopefully everyone got the emails that they needed to be a part of the meeting, either online or the folks here. And so just want to welcome everyone, whether here in person or online. Uh, please feel free online to chat and do all the things you usually do. And also folks here, if you feel like you want to shout out an amen or uh, let's bring it home, brother, you know, or something like that, then, um, you know, whatever you want to do, that'll be, that'll be just fine. That'll be just fine. I want to share some prayer requests with you. And the first one I want to share with you is in your bulletin. Um, we have been able to get back into the ministry with SCI Phoenix around prayer ministry. And in your bulletin is a prayer request from one of the uh, inmates at SCI Phoenix. And also there's a blank one. So if there's, if there's a prayer request that you want the folks there to be praying for you, uh, please put that prayer request on uh, this piece of paper and put it into, uh, uh, into the offering plate as you leave. And um, make sure that you don't put anything identifying in it in terms of your last name or phone number or any of those things. Just say pray for, for John or for Bill or for Sally or for whatever. Um, and uh, please uh, be a part of that. It's been a great ministry that we've been doing for quite some time. Also wanted to share with you some uh, prayer requests that have come through. Uh, the first is uh, prayers for the family and friends of Lois Hyder, who died yesterday. Uh, she has been on our prayer list for about three years, and uh, her niece, Leslie Earhart, has been offering prayers for her and asking uh, us to pray for, pray for Lois. And so pray uh, again for the family and friends of Lois and especially her niece, Leslie. Also prayers of continued healing for Daryl Lowry, uh, who had surgery this past week, for Allison Vogt and for Dave Reef and others that we know and love um, that we know who are recovering um, from one thing or another. Also prayers uh, this day. I mean, I know that you have been keeping up with the news and have probably seen the horrific pictures and heard about uh, what happened, especially in Kentucky and in Illinois, um, and also in about three or four other states. Um, so prayers for those families and victims of the tornadoes, especially in Kentucky. It was really devastating. Um, and uh, our prayers and our hearts certainly go out to them. We also uh, offer prayers this day for the families of migrants killed and injured in a truck accident in Mexico uh, that you may have heard about as well about a week ago. And also our continued prayers for those who are dealing with COVID in whatever way they are and for the healthcare workers who uh, continue to offer their services and uh, their bravery and courage to do what they do. Um, and so prayers for that and, and prayers that people will, will somehow, some way understand they truly need to be vaccinated and that wearing masks is really something that's very helpful. Uh, so just prayers for all of that. Uh, prayers also today for our church and for our congregational meeting today and that the congregational meeting is the beginning of something and that uh, it's the beginning of something new for the new year and prayers for the church as we continue to think about and act out on the future that God has called us to be a part of. Also prayers this day for Bev Miles, who is Pastor Allen's mother. Uh, she was supposed to have surgery this past week, but didn't need to have surgery because the condition improved and is unnecessary at the moment, but ask for continued prayers for Bev um, as uh, she deals with another, a number of medical issues. And also blessings uh, this day, Alex Kramlick and Jen Weiss and Brother Jack and Grandmother Joanne and so many others. Welcome into this world, uh, Riley Lynn, uh, who was born uh, early Wednesday morning, weighing seven and a half pounds. And everyone is healthy, so really good to hear that news. 
Well, those are all the prayer requests that we have this day and hope that you will keep them in mind during this week as well as the prayer requests listed in our bulletin. And remember, if you have any prayer requests to offer, please be in touch with the church office or with Pastor Allen or myself. And so now let us take a few moments to prepare our hearts and our minds, our souls, as we gather together for worship. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that the Lord's name is exalted, sing praises to the Lord, for God has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy. O royal Zion, the great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is close to Christmas. We can easily become distracted from the joyful anticipation of coming Christ's child. Many times we burn the Advent candles at both ends of the midst of our busy days. And so we light this candle to remind ourselves of the joy to come and the joy already in our midst. Us pray. Gracious God, fill us with your joy, the steadfast assurance that you are with us. Help us to remember that this is a holy time, not due to our preparations or celebrations, but because you have chosen to become human so that we can draw more deeply from the wells of salvation.
Will you join me now in the prayer of confession? Gracious God, who light shines in the darkest darkness, we hear you calling us out of hopelessness into hope. But we are resistant to your call. We are afraid when you urge us to take risks. We are afraid of following your light, especially when it leads to places that challenges our hearts and routines. We often are blind to the needs of our neighbor or suffering in the world. Yet we know that your grace shines and is active in those places we avoid. Help us to hear your voice and seek the way of Christ, which leads to hope, peace, and joy. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are forgiven our sins and given grace to grow. Rejoice and be glad. Our sins are forgiven. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. We are here in the midst of God with us, in the midst of Christ and the peace of Christ. And so I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Now let us share the peace of Christ with one another in whatever way we safely can. Whoever has the uh, stocking to, oh, a really young person coming forward. All right. Oh, sorry. I mean, you are. I mean, that's good. And any other young people like to come forward or you can stay in your seats. That's fine. Yeah, because uh, who knows if you're bringing it forward, whatever I'm going to pick out of here might explode. So, <laughs> so I was going to have Pastor Allen do all of these, you know, sort of uh, associate pastor hazing, you know, but, um, but the... Uh, elders just wouldn't allow it so <laughs> just kidding so if no one wants to come forward then i'll just give this set to so i'll just make sure oh gosh what is this oh i don't even like how it feels wait a minute <laughs> all right nice oh look at this a unicorn on oh look at this a unicorn that is on skis okay let me think about that one for a minute okay that was good wasn't it great all right Okay, a unicorn on skis. So a unicorn on skis, a unicorn is something that I think about that is mythical, but it also brings a lot of joy. Whenever you see a unicorn, I mean, don't you just get this, you know, this warm feeling in your heart uh, when you see a unicorn? I, I think so. See, I'm trying. Look, I'm doing the best I can. And then the skis remind me of winter and, um, you know, and all the things that we enjoy around wintertime. And so one of those things that we really enjoy around wintertime is Advent and Christmas. When we think about uh, what's 
warming our hearts and something that happens in this particular season that brings great joy. And I think that um, on this day in which we celebrate joy, this Gaudete Sunday, um, I think it's great to have something like this that reminds us of joy. Um, and hopefully when you see a unicorn, you'll think of this day. <laughs> but uh, that you'll also remember kind of the joy that is brought to us in so many ways, and especially during this time of Advent and Christmas. Uh, and I do hope that you will find those moments during this season uh, where you can find that warmth in your heart, that glow of love and joy given to us by God. So let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for this day and uh, for giving us this time where we can really laugh and, um, and have a time in which we can uh, have joy in our lives. And we can think more about uh, the ways in which you have come into, your, into our lives. Emmanuel, God with us, that is something to really celebrate. So help us to celebrate this day and in the days ahead as we approach Christmas. And may we indeed make room in our hearts for the greatest joy that you have given us, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I need to give this to someone who's going to be here next week, maybe, if someone wants to pick this up and take it. If not, then we'll have to get another young person to fill it up. Okay. All right. That's what we'll do. Okay. All right. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Philippians 4, chapter, chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. Hear these words. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of these words.
Father's mansion be close by me across the golden avenue she was the first one to teach me of heaven and the very first one to tell me Thank you, Rich. And I'd also like to thank uh, the musicians uh, for leading the music part of our worship today as uh, Steve is away uh, dealing with a problem organ in Texas, uh, but so glad that the musicians are leading and um, it was great, to, great that that's happening today. Our gospel reading is from the gospel according to Luke in the third chapter and beginning with the seventh verse. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee of the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. And may God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. As we meet together this day, I can tell you there is so much to rejoice about. The love of family, decorations and preparations for Christmas, more contact with people we haven't heard from in a little bit, the joy of having the musicians play and sing for us this morning, the joy of hearing Rich's special music, the slow but steady healing of those we love, 
the relative health of our congregation and the bold steps we have taken over the past few years with Facebook live streaming and hybrid church and open and affirming. I rejoice and give thanks for the involvement of so many in the ministry of the church. And we could spend quite a bit of time this morning just talking about those things for which we give thanks. On the other hand, as we gather today, I've just come back from a trip to see my parents, to visit my mom who is now in long-term care in a convalescent center that will now be her home, to help my dad in some small way. And I have to tell you, it was hard. Hard to see them in the circumstances that they are in and hard to leave. Rejoice wasn't in my heart. We also come this morning after hearing news the past day or so about the tornadoes, the destruction, the injuries, and the death in Kentucky and Illinois and other places. And you could hear in the voices of the people being interviewed, especially in Kentucky, just how much it was affecting them. And last week we heard news about migrants feeling poverty and oppression and feeling that the only thing they could do was to pack themselves into a truck to try to find some freedom and then many of them losing their lives and being injured. COVID cases are on the rise again and all that goes with that and it's just not, it's not Omicron, it's Delta, you know, all of these different variants. I'm beginning to dislike the Greek alphabet. All the things that go with COVID and still there are others who are saying that it's a hoax and they say that the mandates and suggestions to wear a mask is political. It's like, really? With over 800,000 deaths in the United States? There are loved ones and friends that we know that are hurting this day. Sometimes rejoicing can be hard. And so this is a day, as I come with feelings like this, this is a day in which I really need the wisdom of others, a reminder of what Paul is really talking about in the scripture that we heard from today. And thankfully, I was able to read a passage from Debbie Thomas, who was commenting on this particular scripture this day. And she says, what helps me as I contemplate Paul's advice in this scripture is to remember that he wrote this from prison. He wasn't even sure if he was going to live past the next day. He was awaiting trial. And it also helps to remember that Paul was a man who was threatened and rejected and beaten and shipwrecked. He's someone who knew about the government all around him, the Pax Romana, the peace of the Romans that was not very peaceful at all, where people were oppressed and especially the most vulnerable. So, she says, I wonder whether these famous verses from Philippians are not about feeling good, having a feeling of joy or rejoicing so much as they are about cultivating the inner life of the soul. Joy, she says, requires us to sidestep sentimentality and cynicism alike. It requires that we hold on to two realities at once, the reality of the world's brokenness on the one hand and the reality of God's love in the other. Joy is what happens when we daily, daily live into the belief that God can and will bridge the gap between the world we long for and the world we see before our eyes. I really needed to hear these words to hear about the joy and that it's not just something that I have to manufacture inside myself, but it's joy that comes from what God is doing in my life and in your life and in the life of the world, which God's love is doing whatever it can to try to bridge the gap between the, way we, between the world that we long for and the world that we see each day. And so in this season of Advent, this season when we cultivate patience and waiting, this season when we rely on God's promises, this season when we look ahead to Christ's coming 
This is the season in which we are to cultivate joy, in which we are to cultivate the inner life of the soul. Not a sentimental rose-colored glasses kind of joy, but a depth of joy that calls us to prepare for the way of Christ, to prepare for the way forward, to prepare ourselves for prayer and for patience and for action, to do whatever it is that God calls us to do in the midst of a very real world full of beauty and brokenness. This is good for us to be looking for today, for today we are going to look forward as a congregation. We have a congregational meeting just after the service today in which we are to look forward to new members on ministries and on council and to a new year of ministry as we think about the direction of that ministry and to what we are called to do and what we're supposed to be a part of. And as we look forward, it can make us also thoughtful about what's around the corner, right around the corner. Will we be able to support the ministry as Wingley financially and with our efforts, and with our volunteering, and with our giving. And we also inevitably look back from where we came and where we've tried our very best. And we may come to this moment with hope, and with anxiety, with disappointment about things that could have been done that were not, but also celebration for all that has been accomplished. And I can tell you, there is much that has been accomplished. But I think that whenever we look forward, we are in those days in which we want to have John the Baptist right there with us, in which we can ask him, what should we do? As we're looking forward, John the Baptist, as you're telling us to come forward, to repent, to make sure that we get our lives straight, that we make sure our lives are aligned with what God wants us to do, what are we to do? We have this challenge budget before us. What should we do? We've been dealing pretty well with the pandemic, but what should we do to make sure that the church stays healthy in so many ways? We have these needs for the church, but Jesus calls us to ministry and mission to others. What should we do? The road, the journey is long and arduous, and we need to rely on the spiritual resources that God and community can offer. So John the Baptist, tell us, what should we do? And we know that sometimes the road is relatively clear and, or becomes clear. I remember uh, when COVID began that there was a lot, of, you know, you know, a lot of consternation around what we should be doing and how to go forward. And we struggled with COVID and, and the way in which we were supposed to do church again. And not only us, but so many other churches too. And so we prayed and we listened and we waited with patience and we acted on what we knew we could do and worked out other things that we hoped we could do and what needed to be done. And out of that emerged things like Facebook live streaming, which we're still doing today and that we will do in the future, no matter what. Zoom events kept us connected. Calls from many church members to others were, were, were fast and furious. There were not just a couple of us doing that, but probably 20 of us doing that. So we kind of came to learn what it was, what we needed to do. We listened. It's almost as if we had John the Baptist. It's a, we had, had the Spirit right there saying, okay, just be patient, and this is what you need to do. Sometimes things are that clear, but other times the road ahead is not so clear and often hard and painful. So what then shall we do? John the Baptist was asked this question of those who followed and listened. Now, after the fiery way that he started his sermon with these folks, do you remember that? You brood of vipers. Isn't that a great lesson on Christmas, you know, in Advent? You brood of vipers. We might expect this ascetic to make radical demands. Leave everything, sell everything, and follow me into the desert. Adopt a life of fasting and penance. Other things that could have been really difficult for the people that were there listening that day, but John does not make such demands. Instead, he calls people to fidelity to God in the ordinary circumstances of their lives. Those of you who have more than you need, share with those who have less. Tax collectors, be honest. 
Honesty, that would be a really great thing these days, right? Yeah. Soldiers, do not take advantage of the vulnerable. He could have said that to just about anyone there that day. He might have well have said to them, parents, cherish your children. Spouses, be faithful. Neighbors, live in peace. People of faith, pray and follow in the way of our Savior. And Paul puts it this way. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And I would add, do these things. For these are the building blocks, the foundation, things we can do to find joy in life, things we can do to look forward, to follow in the ways of God and in the path of Christ. Doing these things does not mean that all of the heartache or evil or illness will disappear. It does not mean that we will never have conflicts or experience hurt or be wronged by another, or even that we will never again do something hurtful or wrong ourselves. However, if we think about these things, if we do these things, if we practice these virtues, we will be able to proclaim what Paul does in his letter to Philippians. We will come to know deep within our hearts and souls that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, is always available to us and with us. For Jesus is always near. May we indeed come to know this peace, to welcome Christ into our hearts, to give thanks, to experience joy, and to serve God in this beautiful and broken world. Amen. Will you join me in the affirmation of faith? We believe in God who is good beyond measure. We adore him. God who has created heaven and earth is with us in dark times and joyful times. We believe in Jesus Christ, our savior, who forgives all our sins. We believe that Jesus is the son of God whose birth was a miracle and whose death and resurrection offers us the way of life. We offer our love and faith in Christ and believe in him with all our hearts, souls, and minds. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the source of our common life. It is through the Spirit that we draw strength for the journey and hope in moments of desperation. 
We believe that the Spirit enables us to be a righteous people abiding in God's presence. We believe that the church is the family of God and is called to reflect the love of God and compassion of Christ. Let those of us who seek justice rejoice. May those who believe in Christ follow in his way and may the spirit dwell in our hearts, bestowing the gifts of unity and peace. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray together. Holy One, we come to you with joy in our hearts this morning. We, we praise you and thank you for all of the many ways you intercede in our lives. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who is present with us all the days of our life. For it is in you that we live and move and have our being in the midst of this world and all that is happening around us. We praise you for your mercy and compassion. Your mercies are new every morning and compassion, your compassion for us that's boundless. You are the God who hears us and listens to us and cares for us deeply. We thank you for our family and friends and we praise you for putting them in our lives, deepen our relationships and connections with each other so that we might live life to the full. We come to you this day in love and support for the many things happening in our community and the people whom we love, those in our own families and our friends and our church and our circles. And we ask you to hear our many prayers. We want to thank you for the birth of Riley Lynn. We pray for blessings of love and grace for the parents, Alex and Jen and brother Jack. May this new member of the family bring lots of love and joy. We thank you that my mom didn't have to have surgery. We pray for continuing to have for her health, that it continues to improve and for all of the things that she is facing. We pray for the family and friends of Lois Heider who died yesterday, especially her niece, Leslie. We pray your comfort and peace. And we pray, too, for a continued healing for Allison Vogt, Daryl Lowry, and Dave Reef. Continue to heal their bodies. We ask for your blessing on our congregational meeting today as we discern our future ministry. We also think about the many events happening in the world around us. We ask for your intervention in particular with our government leaders and our Supreme Court who continue to make decisions that directly impact people's lives and their well-being. We pray that you would intercede helping them to make the best decisions for everyone and helping them to work together and to compromise when needed. We lift up the dozens killed in an accident with a truck that was carrying a hundred migrants in Mexico. We pray for their families and friends as they grieve this loss. And for those injured, we pray that you would restore their health. We lift up to you those who are dealing with the aftermath of the weather across the midsection of our country this weekend. We ask for comfort for them as they mourn and grieve and attempt to put their lives back together. We pray for those doing search and rescue. We pray for their strength and resilience as they tirelessly dig through the rubble, looking for victims buried beneath the damage. We pray for their families that they would find you in the midst of the grief. Finally, we pray for those who are dealing with COVID. We pray that you would make them well, give families strength as they deal with long hospital stays and decisions as their loved one lays in the hospital. We pray for the hospital workers that they would find strength and resilience. We ask that you also give people common sense to wear masks, get vaccinated, and protect themselves and those around them. 
We pray for an end to this idea that this virus is a hoax. It is not. Give us grace to deal with those who continue to perpetuate that lie. We thank you that you hear our many prayers. We thank you for interceding on our behalf. We take all of these things and we place them in your hands and ask them in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we come to the time where we prepare our tithes and offerings for the ministry of our church. Um, during this time, we invite you to prepare those. And then after the service, we invite you to place them in the baskets outside in the narthex.
It's the promise of hope It's the wonder of light Let us pray. O oh God of hope and peace, you come to us daily with blessings too numerous to count. You are the Holy One whose presence relieves our anxiety, feeds our hungers, and stirs our compassion. Through our offerings, we express our joy and gratitude. Give us courage to respond to your call as we bear witness to the light of Christ. And we thank you for accepting all we offer. We pray in your name. Amen. Well, there's quite a few announcements uh, this morning, and the first one we're going to have is on a video and has to do with the Advent Mission Project. Who would you take one? <laughs> I take one. What is that? Yes, yes, yes. I remember that. I've been at this business for... 40 some odd years, and I've been involved with Reach Out and Read since it began. And so at every visit, we're going to be talking to you about ideas, about language, about words, about reading, about pictures, about stories. When I read to my son, I notice that he's really intrigued with the colors and the pictures of the book. My favorite part of reading to him is just the quality time that I get to spend with him. It's usually just me and him alone on the couch, you know, just bonding. I think Reach Out and Read is a fabulous program. The science behind giving kids books at this early age is backed by success at school, early preschool at an early age, and it also carries on later to later in life. All my children just love the books that we get from our pediatric visits. This program is so valuable and important, and I can speak for my family how much he's grown with his vocabulary and his communication, talking to other people, because we started reading to him every night and even throughout the day. So Reach Out and Read reaches nearly five million children per year, which is an amazing statistic, and it reaches one in four children from low-income families, which we really see here. This program works for children who have any type of disabilities. I see on an individual um, basis and, and in a daily way the impact that Reach Out and Read makes. To provide the resources for school readiness, for communication ability, is a critically important thing for all of us to do if we can. Muito obrigado por esse programa. Thank you guys very much for this program. of our uh, members who have had children that have been in, at CHOP, and so uh, this, is a great, uh, this is a great Advent mission project and hope you'll be a part of it. I love this time of year because we have a lot of different ways for you to be able to give um, and to give to others, and I hope that you'll pay attention to those announcements in the bulletin as well as the many other announcements that are there. And also just wanted to mention that today is the last Sunday or the last day that we'll be collecting um, Christmas gifts for uh, the Bethany Children's Home. And uh, so if you haven't, if you have it at home, maybe after the service you can rush home and bring it back and uh, not rush too much, but you know, bring it back uh, so that it can be here. Uh, Tony and Betsy Villarreal will be del delivering those gifts tomorrow and we thank them for uh, going out to do that. Uh, again, pay attention to all the other announcements that are in the bulletin. I hope that you do each week. I have an announcement, especially for those who are going to be online for the congregational meeting. I just want to ask for everyone's patience because as they come online, I have to let them in individually. And so that might take a few minutes. And so please have patience for that process to happen around Zoom. 
and hopefully everyone can hear each other, and if not, we might be taking breaks so that, or I, I might be having to repeat the question uh, to the people who are on Zoom, um, and if they have anything to say, we'll need to uh, pass that along to folks as well. So just be patient in this process, this hybrid way of doing church, but this is what our present and what our future will probably look like. So uh, anyway, hope that you'll be a part of the congregational meeting uh, today. So let us now stand and sing our closing hymn, number 107, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn. Yeah. 